This is a lightweight notebook running a game at over 60 FPS using a simple 8-core CPU. Flawlessly without a crazy graphics card, expensive components, excessive power usage, loads of RAM, and fans that sound like a jumbo jet. Finally, an everyday PC that meets all of your needs that's still portable. And that's because of one thing that I will explain before you buy your next laptop. Inside of the Dell XPS that I traveled to the USA with, we have a Lunar Lake Intel Core Ultra 7 spec with 32 gigabytes of RAM. This CPU generation does have have two different RAM options, the 16 gigabytes and also 32 gigabytes, which is soldered onto the package. So it's not upgradable after purchase. So you do want to make sure that you spec it with the exact amount that you think you will need. The on package design helps reduce the size of the motherboard, allowing for a larger battery, helping increase battery efficiency by up to 40% and also help contribute to the lightweight laptops available in this Lunar Lake series. However, what makes this laptop so special is the MPU cores inside of this processor. The neural processing unit sits alongside the CPU cores and also the dedicated GPU cores for the graphic rendering tasks in creative apps and games. But let me show you an example of exactly what the MPU can actually do. In different video editing software such as Adobe Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, we can use something called scene edit detection. Now if we take the exact same 28 minute clip and we initiate the scene edit detection task, essentially the software is going to scan that entire footage and basically mark every single point where it has a cut, which is great for re-editing footage if you haven't got all of the B-roll and the separate files for example. If we compare this to an old PC that doesn't have any MPU cores on the processor against the new Intel AI PC with the MPU processing, on our Lunar Lake laptop, it took around 3 minutes and 40 seconds to complete this task. And on a non-AI assisted system, it took over 14 minutes to do the exact same clip in the same timeline. Another example is converting audio into text. This can be quite common in video editing softwares for either editing via the text or actually transcribing it into subtitles. Once again, comparing it between these two different systems with the MPU and without, completing the transcribe in around one minute compared to one minute 30, sometimes even two minutes with this clip, depending on the project settings. The efficiency of these MPU cores also helps increase the batch life and also the lifespan of the laptop you've got. Like think about it, for example, if you have some footage, this is just for me example, I do editing. I'm constantly doing that every single day and it might take 18 minutes to process some form of the clip, but I'd shorten down to a few minutes or even under a minute, a matter of seconds to do the exact same task. The overall sustained load power on my laptop is much less. It's doing it in 60 seconds to two minutes tops versus it doing 10 minutes straight of that laptop being under load, Ooh, the fans going crazy and it churning away. So not only can you do things quicker, you can also do them more times within the same amount of battery life allocation. To put the battery life to the test, I completed around a 12 hour road trip from Las Vegas to Lake Tahoe. Along the way, we stopped off and filmed loads of different content for one of my music YouTube channels, where we recorded multiple channels of audio into Ableton Live using this laptop and some USB audio interface. The laptop was on for pretty much the whole day. We either just like closed the lid, threw it in the backpack and got it out later on, or someone was actually using it in the car to just check all the stuff that we were filming throughout the day and making sure everything was all right in between the stops. We never dropped below 30% battery life and we did give it a little bit of a charge from sort of like mid to late afternoon when we were grabbing some food, so where we boosted it back up to about 55%. But considering the quite intense workload when we were at the locations, we literally just set the record off and just let it roll in the background. We were maybe at each spot for about an hour or so at a time. It performed very well, and there was also a large variety in different conditions. Uh, one minute we were in like a red hot desert, then we were like, it was normal temperatures, and then it was freezing cold up in the mountains and all snowy, and the altitude was super crazy. Laptop didn't freeze, crash, no issues at all. I was actually surprised that it worked so flawlessly, because usually on Windows, when you're doing like audio production with ASIO drivers, it can be just a little bit glitchy, little clicks and stuff in the sound, but this seem to do it great. My only complaint was the I.O. and the lack of USB ports. You have two USB Type-C ports, one of which is Thunderbolt 4, so that's obviously useful for transferring data, also connecting it to an external eGPU, which I'll talk about in a moment. But obviously, if you were, for example, when we were grabbing food, I was charging it with one of the ports whilst also trying to preview all of the footage off the various different SD cards we had and trying to transfer that footage onto another SSD to back it up in case obviously anything happened to them. So that was a little bit annoying. I have to like unplug loads of stuff or get loads of adapters out of the box. Definitely some of the best battery performance I have seen from a Windows laptop in a very long time. Typically, we would get around two to three hours tops from this type of workload from laptops we've tested in the past. Now, it's usually because these laptops do often have like a huge dedicated GPU for like gaming. So all of that just increases the overall power draw of the actual 
system and obviously obviously the, the CPU sometimes are a little bit more beefier, but they seem to be super efficient. You could look at something from the H series or the HX series if you do need more professional connection ports from the new Arrow Lake generation. I would kind of think of these Lunar Lake notebooks as like a MacBook Air and then anything that's more professional is Arrow Lake, which is more of your MacBook Pro. That's how these sort of sit within the marketplace. But just like on those Apple devices, you can do about 90% of everything you need to on the air variation. It just usually comes down to the ports that is the withholding factor. Right, so we drove through the night that we're in Re Reno right now. We're gonna go check out like Tejo, which is absolutely insane views of the class. Laptops being performing really good. But before we go and continue with the shoot, we need to get some clothes because it's absolutely freezing here. So I've, this, I've never seen snow like this in my life. Rossi's dressed for less. Let's get some new outfits, mate. That was unsuccessful, we secured no new garments. So we're just gonna crack on even if it's cold. We then flew back into Vegas where we hit the show floor at CES and attended a bunch of press keynotes. Now normally I would have had to type all of these notes up myself manually, which I did do in some instances just because I'm that's used to that workflow. But I soon quickly adapted to the fact that I could utilize the AI PC to do all of that for me and also summarize the entire event. This made it way more pleasurable because we could just sit there and sort of watch it, also get better clips and focus more on the camera footage than typing and then grabbing the camera and missing something. There's a whole bunch of different applications that you can use that will automatically take notes using AI, which is a great use case for anybody that's a student, for example. You could sit in a lecture, just open up the PC, use the onboard microphone, it'll hear what the lecture's doing. It even can integrate into Zoom calls and summarize all your Zoom calls. There's some stuff like Otter AI that can actually like summarize the Zoom call and create pie charts and all sorts of cool things. Plus, if you can find an app that's using the MPU rather than AI via the cloud, you can then use these apps offline. Now this is probably the most confusing thing when it comes to AI is sure every single PC can run AI but this has MPU cores which means you can use it offline. The MPU is essentially the AI processor inside of this that means you don't need to be connected to the internet to do it via the cloud. All the apps at the moment, pretty much most of the apps in the marketplace that we've seen will use the cloud. So for example, ChatGPT, you'll boot that up on Google, type in your command prompts, and then it will use your internet to get and gather that data and return it back to you. Whereas with these new generations of laptops, this allows you to be offline, use the MPU processing unit within the laptop, not be connected to the internet and still do all of those exact same tasks. So you're not inhibited by one, your internet speed, because if you've ever tried AI on slow Wi-Fi, it could take a long time to fire it back, the prompt that you've inputted. So all of this can be done directly on the device rather than being done via the cloud. On the MPU, because this is locally processed, the speeds of the apps are way faster. And it also unlocks the potential for the future when more developers begin leveraging these neural processing units on the systems. After experiencing these MPU cores, I'm starting to understand how important they are to future laptops. Like if you purchase a laptop now that doesn't have these, like might be all right for the next 12 to 18 months. But I feel like once all these softwares really start utilizing this level of optimization, you're going to see how slow that laptop is because you haven't even just got a few MPU cores to at least keep it relevant. And if you're buying a laptop, you're probably gonna use it for like four to five years, then switch it out. So at least this will give you a little bit of future proofing to start dipping your toe into all of these different AI applications. When it comes to the gaming performance, using Intel's XCSS2, this is frame generation and also upscaling on the resolution. So essentially it will render the game at a lower resolution than it is displaying, so it's much less intensive on the hardware. And then it will upscale this and use AI to generate interpolated frames in between to make the game run much smoother on lower spec hardware. Surprisingly, we could run F124 without any issues whatsoever, hovering around 50 to 60 frames per second on this tiny laptop. If you do require more graphics performance, either for gaming or creative apps, you can connect an eGPU up to these Lunar Lake laptops. This is essentially an external graphics card. You can choose whatever spec graphics card you need. And this will help you transform it from a simple notebook that's lightweight that you can take on the go that has more than enough power to then docking it at home and essentially turning it into kind of a hybrid desktop system. A special thank you to Intel for partnering on today's video and helping make it possible. On the topic of needing more graphics performance or a beefier laptop, you should check out this video next where we explore the Intel HX series, which is their high-end productivity and gaming laptops. Because if you like this, you'll like that.